From the spark of an idea to a unique and state-of-the-art reality. The Centre for Sustainable Energy Technology has taken 18 months to build on the University of Nottingham's campus in Ningbo, eastern China. It's a landmark collaborative project between East and West, whose purpose is to tackle a global challenge in a global way. It'll serve as a base for leading international research expertise to address the problem of climate change through sustainable energy technology. The CSET building is one of the greenest research facilities in the world. It's been designed to serve as an example of how new technology can create buildings that are energy self-sufficient. CSET will virtually power itself. We have uh, solar collector systems and that is to produce hot water for our air conditioning system. We have uh, the solar panels which will generate nearly about 85% of the electricity that we need. Uh, we also have the borehole system that is for our ground source heat pumps so we are able to utilize the stable temperature in the ground throughout the year. Cutting edge architectural design has also played a part in the self-sufficiency of the building. Artistic inspiration came from two Chinese design classics, the paper lantern and the fan. The double skin structure will keep it insulated in hot and cold weather and the design of the office space in the tower maximises daylight to reduce the need for artificial light. For architect Mario Cuccinella, designing with sustainability in mind has been a liberating experience. Yeah, I think it's much better than what I dreamed because, you know, I saw yesterday for the first time after a lot of work in, uh, in making models and things, and I think the building looks like much better. And then I think the idea of the fans, the combination of fans together is make the building very unique. And also when we walk here down in this uh, slope, I think it's really an invitation to come inside of the building. So you walk down, we make this long ramp, and then the building invites you to come in. And then the first thing you met is the research laboratory. If you look the building in different position, you always see the building different, which is very unique in some way, because I always see static. I think this building showing a sort of dynamics as any energy is, is always something dynamic and this building is some way representing these ideas of, of dynamism if you can say. The paper lantern is designed to be a living project delivering real practical results in a fast developing country where construction is the biggest energy consuming industry. Yeah I think if China continue to use traditional technology without this kind of energy saving technology the, the future impact on the world will be tremendous and it will be fairly detrimental. Nottingham is very, very well received in China and the Chinese government, the local research institution, they appreciate the kinds of uh, tremendous effort put by the university here. Our campus today and also the CISA building are highly appreciated and it will be adopted as a, a successful model in China. And that model will continue to develop and improve thanks to the scientists who will be based here. As well as being a centre of excellence for research and teaching, CSET will play a key role in the proposed Virtual Academy for Sustainable Cities, a new venture being forged by the UK and Chinese governments. The energy problem would be the one great buffer to hold back economic growth in China, so it's got to be tackled. Gordon Brown and Wen Jiabao signed a Memorandum of Understanding, a delegation I attended in January, and this is implementing it. And Nottingham will be leading, with one or two other British universities, in setting up the research for the future and working with industry to solve the energy problems now and in retrofitting existing houses. The centre also aims to generate new ideas in this field of science. To attract the best young brains from all over the world, it'll offer a unique range of courses, including a new PhD programme. Not only is it an attraction to uh, students from all over the world, but uh, it's increasingly attracting students in China. We are taking, we admitted uh, over 60 students to study architectural and environmental engineering this year, and that joined 60 from last year. 
and we've also got master's students. Well, I think it's very exciting, I think, to be able to put so many of the technologies all together, which can do so much to help in the design of buildings, not only in China but elsewhere, I think is really a very exciting day. And certainly here in China, there's an awful lot of attention being paid to how to cut down the energy consumption in buildings, um, and this uh, institute, as well as the building, has a great role to play, I think, in that endeavour. I've got no doubt that within the next 10 years, uh, most of these technologies you know, will become part of the, all the standard features of uh, you know, most buildings in China, especially the, uh, the commercial buildings. But it's not just in China that the ideas and results produced here will be used. It's hoped this unique collaboration between East and West will help fuel sustainable development and redevelopment across the world.